Happy Father's Day to everybody. We're glad to have you here. We're excited about uh, being able to uh, worship with you today. And I forgot to look for a thumbs up. Have we got a thumbs up? We've got a thumbs up. Okay. We've got a quick video we want to show you uh, uh, as we begin the service today. Just a quick Father's Day video. So I hope you enjoy it. The most amazing man alive. Police often question him just because they find him interesting. He once counted to infinity, twice. His picture is worth a billion words. He is both left-handed and right-handed. It only takes him 20 minutes to watch 60 minutes. He can't judge a book by its cover. He uses Tabasco sauce instead of Bicene. He can speak Braille. He once beat up the man who invented boxing. He once overthrew a third world dictator by making a single phone call. His barbecue ribs are so good, he was given a Nobel Peace Prize. People come from miles around just to watch his beard grow. He was turned down for the lead and cool hand look because he was too cool. He never asked for directions because he is never lost. He had to walk to school, uphill, both ways in the snow, barefoot. There is no loofah in his shower. He uses an SOS pad. He has had a full-time job since he was two. He is not afraid of the dark. The dark is afraid of him. His favorite food is steak. Sometimes he even cooks it. He won the Pulitzer for a grocery list he scribbled out on a napkin. He once was named man of the year on January 11. He does not lift weights. He cannot find any that are heavy enough. He knows what to do with a Klondike bar. He is the most amazing man alive. He is your father. Happy Father's Day, my friends. He is the most amazing man alive. He is your father. I just wanted to try the accent. It, it, mine was awful. But anyway... But we, we want to make sure that we wish a very happy Father's Day to all of our dads and uh, those of you who have stepped into the role of dad where a dad wasn't present and all that kind of thing. We just wish you a very happy Father's Day and uh, we're so glad for the uh, contribution that you're making into our young people. All right, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ronnie Wiggins. He is our chairman of the board, president, director of men's ministries. What is your title? Bro? Yeah, you're Ronnie Wiggins, right? Could you come forward, please? Boy, he rolled his eyes at me. What is that all about? But we have, some, we have some gifts that we would like to give out to some very special men. They're special because their name gets drawn. And uh, I just want Brother Ronnie to help draw the names. That's all. No, no. If you draw your name, you get a gift. Good luck with that, by the way. If you do draw your name as a first name, I know it's going to be rigged. All right. So who do we got for the very first one? We've got Kenny Mills. Kenny Mills. <laughs> Don't worry. We're going to bring it to you. We're going to bring it to you. You're a dad. You work hard enough as it is. It's about time the kids serve you, right? Okay. All right. Our second gift goes to Ronnie Wiggins and Chris. Ronnie. <laughs> we won. Russell Mills. Russell Mills. Yeah, you got to raise your hand, brother. They're all the way in the back there. You see him? Okay, go ahead and grab it, and there we go. Raise your hand. Wave it. Act like you want it. There you go. That's but. I mean, if you don't show more enthusiasm, we're going to just take it away. All right, and our last and final winner, Sister Edwardine Harrell. <laughs> si oh, wait. How did that? What? No, that's not right. I missed it. Okay, I don't think he's here, is he? But he's not here, right? Okay. All right. So let's draw another name. That one's upside down. Oh, that's better. Bubba Dupree. Bubba Dupree. <laughs> All right. So thank you, Brother Ronnie. Your check's in the mail. All right. So thank you to our, our uh, men's ministries director, president, bishop, Ronnie Wiggins, we appreciate him and all the hard work that he did making this possible, which literally was walking from his pew up here 
to draw the names. So thanks for that. Thanks to my wife for wrapping the gifts because I don't wrap very well, but that's okay. Uh, but we're going to get started here in just a moment. I do want to mention something to you real quick, though. The video that you saw actually came from our uh, Right Now Media account, and it's been in the bulletin about it. Some of you are going to be receiving an email. If you sent us your email letting us know that you wanted to check this out, uh, you're going to be receiving an email later today to show you how to set up your account and all that. If you forgot to send me an email and you want to get on this, it's, it's more than just videos like that. There's video Bible studies and devotions. There's uh, programming for children and adults. Uh, there's all sorts of, uh, I think it's like 25,000 plus video uh, uh, devotions and Bible studies and all that that you can pull from. And in fact, I've been doing a couple of them myself uh, and uh, been really blessed by them. And so if you are interested in taking advantage of this, it's uh, no cost to you. This is something the church is checking out. We're going to see if it's uh, something that we want to offer to our people. But if, if you didn't get me your email address, you can actually send your email. Uh, well, you can just text it to me if you want, or you can send it to the uh, OG PHC media team at gmail.com and we'll make sure and, and get you signed up for that but the rest of you who have already sent your email you should receive something about that this afternoon and I really believe you're going to enjoy the uh, the resources that are available this is something that the IPHC has partnered with this company and uh, it's it's got just all sorts of different topics everything you can think of from finances to parenting to marriages to um, you know, how do I make my kid tie his shoes and not blow snot on his feet? I mean, all sorts of things on there. So uh, check it out, and I know that you're going to be blessed by that. All right. All right, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer as we open up today because we want to make sure that even though this is a holiday and even though we're, we're celebrating our fathers, we want to make sure that we celebrate our Heavenly Father first and foremost. Amen? We want to make sure that what we do today is that we still bring Him honor, we bring Him glory. As great as it is for us to be in church together and and to uh, you know, give out the gifts and everybody gets the back scratcher thing and all of that. We want to make sure that we're giving God what he deserves. And that is our praise. And that is our worship. And that is our, uh, for us to glorify him and to lift him up. I want to do something a little bit different. You know, we've got our prayer box. And if you have a prayer request and you'd like to drop it in while we're praying, you can do that. Or you can do it after service. Uh, that's fine. But I want to do something just a little bit different this morning. We've had... Quite a few people that have been hit with some sickness as of late. Uh, some have been not really a sickness, but they've been going through surgeries and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Sister Belinda just had a hip replacement surgery, and she's doing well. We thank God for that. She has kind of gotten that point now where she's in some pain, uh, you know, experiencing some pain and such, but she is getting along well, and so that's great. Um, but we also, apparently there's some flu that's been going around. Sister Sherry Ward had mentioned that um, she's been hit with it really badly, and, and uh, some of her kids have got it, and there's some others that have been saying about how they've been struggling with this. I believe God's a healer, amen? So what I want to do is something just a little bit different. If you'll stand with me this morning as we open up, and we don't usually do this, and some of you might be like, Ugh, I don't want to, but just, just humor me. It's Father's Day. This will be your gift to me. Uh, but if you can just take the hand of the person next to you, and I want us to pray together because I want us to pray in unity. I want us to pray as a body. I don't want us to pray as just a bunch of individuals doing their own thing, waiting for the preacher to shut up and stop praying. I want us to pray as a body that God would bring healing to our area, to our, our church family, that God will bring healing to this entire area, not just physical, but spiritual healing as well, emotional healing, those that have been going through hard times, that have been hurt, those who, who have been going through things where they feel like they just can't take another step. I want us to pray that God will be a healer today. Can we pray that together this morning? Let's pray together and, and just lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and glorify your holy name for allowing us to be in your house today. Lord, on this Father's Day, we want to make sure we celebrate our Heavenly Father. We want to make sure that we celebrate the Father who is above all, God. Lord, we celebrate you and we glorify you and we honor you with our praise and with our worship today. Father, as a church body, we want to come together we want to join together in unity, praying against sickness in this, uh, in this church body and in this community. Father, this flu that's going around or if COVID is trying to rear its head or, or strep or any other sickness that's going around, 
Lord, we know you're a healer. And we know, Father, that you can make us whole even when sickness tries to come against us. Lord, those that have been going through different surgeries or are getting ready to go through surgeries, God. Lord, we're believing in Jesus' name that you're going to bring restoration to their bodies as well. Lord, even if you use uh, medicine to, uh, to try to fix the problem, God, we know that the recovery and everything else involved, Lord, that it all has to come from you. And so we ask that now. Now in Jesus name God we just speak against sickness as a body as we are joined together today as a body we speak against sickness we speak against uh, those that have been hurt emotionally we speak against those that are having uh, uh, issues as far as just anxiety and and those types of things God we want to speak against all of this because none of it comes from you So, Lord, we don't want the things that the enemy is trying to give us, but instead we want that every good and perfect gift that comes directly from the Father above. Lord, would you bless this service today as we bless you with our worship and with our praise, as we glorify you and we lift you up, God. Lord, would you just have your way in this house and be glorified on this day, Father. We give you glory and praise, and you alone are worthy to receive it. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Remain standing if you would. We're about to go to a time of praise and worship today. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have have a little little talk talk with Jesus. Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes may fill with tears, but Jesus is the friend who watches day and night. I go to Him in prayer, He knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. All about our troubles, he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, you'll know a little fire is burning. He will find a little talk with Jesus, makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. By and by, when you feel a little prayer will turn in, you'll know a little fire is burning. We'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. 
this morning hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord you can be seated i just want to have a little talk with jesus but i'm ready to have a talk with him face to face amen praise the lord praise the lord uh as i mentioned in my one minute announcement which i know all of you are going to say hey you did it last week so now you got to do it from now on but uh, as i mentioned we've got 18 kids from oak grove that are going to be going to youth camp now i don't know if that's more than you've had in the past. I know it's more than we had last year, for sure. But not only do we have 18 kids going, I worked youth camp last year, and Brother James Deacon worked youth camp last year. But this year, we roped it. I mean, we talked to a couple of others. And uh, Sister Crystal and Sister Megan Bilton are going to be working youth camp. Yeah, I know. Everybody's like, whoa, whoa. And... Uh, I don't know if that was a clap like good for you or, or an I'll pray for you, but either one, we could use it. So what I want to do, though, because youth camp actually starts this afternoon uh, with teen camp. Uh, this afternoon, the teens will be heading out to Camp Robinson, and I'll go and I'll pick them back up maybe on Thursday. And uh, my thing is this. When I was in youth camp, when I was nine years old, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Every year that I went to youth camp, I was blessed beyond measure. In fact, I was fortunate enough to be in some churches where I could see adults worshiping, and so I knew what it was like to worship. But there's something different about when it's geared towards your age group that it really makes a difference. And uh, some amazing things can happen. There are people that have been called to preach at youth camp. There are people that have been saved at youth camp. You know, you think everybody that goes to youth camp knows Christ, but they don't. Kids that have been saved, kids that have been sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, kids that have been uh, so deeply encouraged by God when they went to youth camp, and they, they wouldn't even want to miss a year. And when they got too old to go to youth camp, they began working youth camp, that sort of thing. That's what I want for our kids. Not only our kids... I want that for our counselors as well, for our workers as well. So what I'd like to do, if we can, before we go to our tithe and offering today, if you, I know not everybody that's going to youth camp is, is here this morning, but if you are going to youth camp, either as a counselor or as a camper, then if you would, if you just come and stand in the altar area, I want us to have a word of prayer as a church because I want there to be, that's you too. I don't mean just today. I mean at any of the camps. Alan's looking around like, who all's going? Are you? But I want it to be to where our, our campers and our counselors and, and all of them, that they are just abundantly blessed by God. I want them to be safe. 
I don't want anybody getting hurt. And gaga ball is a mean sport, let me tell you. Listen, if you don't know what gaga ball is, after church on Wednesday, go and watch these kids play. They are ruthless. They will hit that ball and knock somebody's head off and, and not even stop to pray for them afterwards. They just go and they're like, the Lord, the Lord keep you. And then they just kind of move on. So, uh, but we want to pray for, for safety, uh, for our counselors. We want to pray for sanity. Uh, we want to pray uh, that they don't just go and attend camp and have a good time. That's great. I mean, there's nothing wrong with just going and just having a good time. But I want us to pray that they will have an experience with God. Not just the campers, but the counselors as well. That, that they will have an experience with, with God. So would you just stretch your hands this way? And I'm not going to ask everybody to come down. But I just want us to pray over our campers and our counselors. And like I said, I know that there's several that are not here uh, this morning. And uh, that's fine. You know, but we're, we're praying for them as well. The Lord knows who they are. But, but let's just pray that God will just really use every single one of us. That God would just fill us. God would restore us, that God would do something incredible in our lives through these youth camps. Could you just stretch your hands forth and let's just pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to send kids and counselors to youth camp. Lord, it's an amazing experience. God, to be able to be surrounded by those who are like-minded, to be able to be in a place where we're hearing, we're not hearing about all the negativity of this world. We're not hearing all the uh, indoctrination of evil that is uh, that our kids are being barraged with every single day. But Lord, instead, they're surrounded by the things of God. They're surrounded by the Word of God. They're surrounded by the songs of praise and of worship, Father. And they're able to see that even though we're Christians, it doesn't mean that we can't enjoy ourselves and have a good time with others and 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 have a, a just a, a time of recreation and lord i pray in jesus name for safety to be upon the entire camp all the camps that are going to be done teen and junior and primary god that, that that you will just have your hand upon every single one of them lord i pray for our counselors god that they will be able to reach out to these kids some of them may come from troubled homes some of them may come from difficult situations and they may have to step in and show the love of christ to somebody who may be these children haven't seen that before God would you just inspire them and use them and touch them in Jesus name Lord I pray for our campers God Lord for your protection upon them but God also that they will go not just seeking to make friends not just seeking to get a boyfriend or girlfriend but God that they will go seeking you and Lord that you will stir up something in their hearts and in their spirits Lord e even if they aren't looking for that God I pray Lord that you will knock on the door of their hearts and that they will open up that door and let you come in god we're believing for great testimonies to come from our our campers and our counselors for youth camp this year and lord for those that are not here that are going to be participating i pray for your touch to be upon them as well bring strength to them and 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 touch them lord and let them go seeking you as well and father we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do and we're looking forward to the testimonies that we're going to hear uh, from our campers and our counselors after all the camps are done we can't wait to hear what the Lord has done in their lives and we give you glory and honor in Jesus wonderful name amen 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 thank you guys so much you can be seated please continue to keep our campers and counselors in your prayers like I said teen camp is this week next week is uh, camp meeting and then the week of the 4th of July is junior camp and then the following week is primary camp that's one that I'm going to pray all right, so uh, I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time. We're going to receive this morning's tithe and offering. And we're so grateful for what God gives us. Amen. Everything we have is only because of his grace and his mercy. Everything that we have and everything we're able to give, everything that we're able to do is only because God has blessed us. And so I want to make sure that we're doing our part, that we're being obedient in Scripture. I want to make sure that you're doing your part to give so that you can continue to be blessed. Because as we're faithful, God entrusts us with more. Amen? As we're faithful with what God has given us, He entrusts us with more. And I know that I could, I could probably take testimonies for the rest of the day from people that have been faithful in their giving and God has been faithful to them. Not just in finances, but in everything in their families and their jobs and with everything else. There's never been a time 
There's never been a time where we have done what we were supposed to do and God has not been faithful. And so I pray that you'll just continue to do that and let the Lord use you uh, as you give today. Can we just pray together? Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have given us. We are so blessed and honored, Lord, to be able to have what we have. And God, we just pray that we will be faithful with it according to Scripture. As we give, Father, we'll give with a cheerful heart. Lord, that we will, we will pay our tithe as you have instructed us in Malachi. God, that we will give out of the abundance of what you have given us so that we can be a blessing to others, Father. And Lord, we look forward to the harvest that's going to be reaped because of the, sow, of the seed that's sown today. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Give him praise one more time, if you would, this morning. Glory to God. Thank you, praise team musicians. I appreciate your ministry today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs. We're going to read two scriptures out of Proverbs as we start this morning. Proverbs 1.8 is where we're going to start. I might want to turn there myself. There we go. Proverbs 1.8. And then we're also going to be looking at Proverbs 22.6. One thing while you're turning there that I uh, didn't mention. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to be very blessed next Sunday morning. Uh, Dr. Terry Trammell will be here to speak for us. He's going to be the speaker for camp meeting uh, next week. Dr. Trammell is the international director for the global outreach uh, offerings or the global outreach ministry and also for leadership ministries uh, over in Oklahoma at the, uh, at the, World, at the World Ministry Center. And um, he's, uh, I've had a couple of chances to hear him actually teach. I don't... I don't think we've actually had an opportunity to hear him preach, but we've been able to hear him teach, and some of the things that uh, he has brought out in his teaching have been absolutely phenomenal, such great content, uh, really getting into the Word and really making you think. Uh, my only problem with him is that he's a Sooner fan, but that's all right because the Lord is going to have a part in heaven for Sooner fans. It's just not going to be the good part of town. All right. Um, if, if you have your Bibles, if you would stand this morning for the reading of the word today, we're going to read Proverbs 1, 8, and then we're also going to go over to Proverbs 22, verse 6. Proverbs 1, 8 says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. And now going over to Proverbs 22, Verse 6, and most of you have heard this or you know this passage of Scripture. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Lord, we ask now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will minister through me as your vessel today. As I bring this word, God, I pray that you will open the minds and hearts 
of those that are in this congregation, those that are watching online, uh, those that may be watching this at a later time. Father, I pray that you will bless them with the word that's going to come forth, Father. Lord, I'm, I'm just a, a, an earthen vessel, but Lord, I know that you can speak through me. And I know that you can bring a word, even on this holiday weekend, I know, Father, that you can bring a word that's going to minister to somebody. And I pray that that's what happens, God. I pray that you will use me to minister to your people. And we glorify you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. And if you saw my, uh, my little sermon slide online yesterday on the Facebook page, this was it. I want to speak to you about dumb daddies. And I know maybe some of you are thinking, I know a picture that he could have used other than that one, but we're not going to go there today because, you know, it's never what you think it's going to be, right? That's what, if you've learned anything about me so far, you know, it's never the direction you think it's going to be going. Um, how many of you remember the show Father Knows Best? Okay, a couple of old people raising their hands, and the young people are saying, never heard of it. Uh, there was a show by the, by the name of Father Who Knows Best, and I'll be honest with you, I've actually never seen an episode. I've, I've, I know it's in black and white, and I know that it ran from 1954 to 1960. And in this show, I'm assuming from the title, unless it was ironic, uh, there would be problems, and the dad would say, well, the thing you need to do, son, is, and then would always have the answer. Uh, you look at the Andy Griffith show, and Andy, at the very beginning of the, se of the show, if you ever watched it, at the, the very first season, Andy was, uh, he was trying to be like one of the comedians. You know, he was trying to be the funny one. And then he realized that Barney was way funnier than him. And so he just kind of became the straight man. But he always had the answer to give to Opie, right? He always was able to show Opie how Opie needed to be a man and how Opie needed to be. And, and uh, it's okay, son, go ahead and let that kid hit you. You just hit him right back. You know, some, some values maybe we don't necessarily teach nowadays. But, uh, but he also told him about how to be respectful and taught him how to uh, uh, be careful with money and all that kind of thing. There was another show that was uh, similar to this kind of genre, Leave it to Beaver. Now, how many of you ever watched that or have you at least heard of it? Okay, once again, only old people that are raising their hands. That's fine. Uh, but from 1957 to 1963, uh, Leave it to Beaver was on there. And, and you know, and uh, he, the dad came in and all that. And I think I may have seen one episode of that. And I was like, this, this isn't my thing. But that's all right. But... Uh, but it was a, a very popular show, and everybody had heard, and they had movies that they did made for TV movies later on, and, and reunions, and all that kind of thing. So back in that mid to late 50s, early 60s, what the media was portraying was a father who was a hard worker, who was competent, who uh, had the answers for everything, and was able to raise their children. Then what happened is there came some other shows. Now, first of all, there were some animated shows. Anybody heard of the Flintstones? Come on. Okay, there's, all right, some of the young people have heard of that. Okay, 1960, here come the Flintstones. Fred Flintstone, he, you know, they finally had pebbles. You know, they didn't have pebbles at first, but then they had pebbles, and he's a daddy. Fred Flintstone was a moron. He was a big oaf. And, and he would try to do stuff, and he always ended up messing up, right? Am I right? Him and Barney would get together, and, and something would catch on fire, which it was all stone. Not sure how that happened, but they still found a way. And then Wilma and Betty, of course, always had their stuff together. Isn't that right? And then shortly after that came the futuristic version of the Flintstones, the Jetsons, thank you very much. The Jetsons came around in 1962. George Jetson, he went to work every day and all that, but he was a big dummy too. And he would always mess everything up. Now, he always still, by the time the end of the program came, there was still respect, and there was still that whole, I love you, baby, and I love you too, that kind of thing. You know, there was still that. But through, you know, what the real funny part was through these animated shows was that the guys were just a bunch of big dummies. Well, the problem is that as we have gone on in, in our world and in the media, more and more and more of these shows have been made that have portrayed the father as being really stupid, as the father being the one to mess everything up and the mom being the one that had it all together and bringing it in. Now, I do want to say this before I go any further. Um, it seems like whenever somebody preaches 
about what a biblical father is supposed to be. Uh, somebody accused us of sexism. Yeah, they accused, oh, well, you know, you just hate women is all that it is. No, I think women are great. You know, uh, I mean, one in particular. But, you know, the rest of y'all are pretty good too, you know. And uh, so please don't get me wrong and, make, and think that I hate women and I want them all, you know, they should be barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if you want to go in the kitchen to make me something, that's up to you. I mean, God bless you for it. But uh, I, don't, I don't want you to think that I disrespect women at all whatsoever. But what I do want is for men to step up and be what God has ca called them to be and what God has created them to be because what we see in the media is we see shows like Everybody Loves Raymond or we see shows like uh, The Honeymooners even or, or some of these other shows that and it seems like all of them are coming around now where, where the dad is just, he's, he's useless pretty much. He's just a big dummy. He's useless and, and mom has to fix everything and you know, even, even the Cosby show, you know, he was a doctor and he had some wisdom to dispense. But when it all came down to it, who was the one that really had their stuff together? Claire, right? And she always had to go in and, and show Heathcliff uh, how things needed to be. And you might be saying, boy, you watch a lot of television. I used to. But uh, you notice I'm not saying a whole lot of modern shows now, but that's all right. But even with all of that that I'm saying about how the media has been pushing that you know, dads are dumb, that dads don't have it together, that dads, uh, you know, that they just mess everything up and, you know, they can, they can uh, hang a picture or they can unclog a toilet, but they're the ones who probably clogged in in the first place and all that kind of thing. You know, still, it's, there's this portrayal that has been going on throughout the world, has been going on throughout media, that the, the dad is a big dummy. That the mom is the one that has all the answers. That the dad is the one that's making all the problems. And because of that, we have seen generations of dumb daddies coming up. Now, here's the thing, though. When I say dumb daddies, I'm not talking about stupid. I don't think any of the men in this church are stupid. Amen? All right, the ladies are saying that. I didn't hear any of the guys. They may be asleep, but they're not stupid. All right, somebody said amen, they're asleep. So I'm going to get through this as quick as I can, I promise you. But we've been raising these, this generation of dumb daddies. But, you know, the word dumb does not necessarily mean stupid. There's another definition of dumb that I really want to talk about today. And that other definition of dumb is someone who is unable or unwilling to speak. You see, we have got generations of fathers, generations of men that are coming up, and the men are scared to death to say anything. The men have gotten to the place to where if the children have a question about God, go ask your mother. Go find out from her. She's the one that really does all the religious stuff in the house. I just I, I bring us to church and I take us home and that's about it. We've gotten to a place to where if there's homework questions, go ask your mother. Go find out what your mom says. You know, I don't, I don't think I need to a or answer this. If there are questions about life that come up. Now, if there are questions about like hunting or fishing or whatever, yeah, we're ready to jump in on that. You want to know how to take a part of gun and put it back together brother sit down let me show you we'll watch a youtube video together but it seems like with those things that cause a a a young man or a young woman to uh to grow and to mature that the dad wants to push off the answers and wants to have the mom give the answers instead i don't i don't know why exactly or i didn't know why before i started really studying and praying about this why it is that men have become so afraid to just be dads to stand up and to be a father, to stand up and to say, look, this is right and this is wrong, and that's just all that there is to it. Not to, to pawn it off on mom and say, well, why don't you go ask your mother? Now, I will say this. I think that some guys are saying that because they're too lazy to look away from the television or to look away from their phone or whatever it is that they're doing. They don't want to be bothered. They just want some peace and quiet. Go ask your mom because I don't want to hear it. And shame on you if that's the case because if God has blessed you enough to allow you to be a father you need to step into that role with pride you need to step into that role with excitement and you need to say I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be a father not just the parent but a father to my son or a father to my daughter can you say amen we need fathers that will step up I, in fact I think it was last year I preached and I was talking about the different uh statistics from the National Fatherhood Institute of the way that uh 
that our children will be raised in situations where fathers are not present and the number that end up in jail and the number that end up dropping out of school and the number that end up living in poverty or getting addicted to drugs or alcohol and there's that correlating factor of a father not being present. My friends, understand this. Dads, I'm speaking to you. You can be living in the same house but not be present in your child's life and that's wrong. That's wrong. That's not what God's called you to do. You may be unwilling to speak. You may even be unable to speak. You might think, well, I just, I don't have all the answers. You know what? You get with your child and say, let's find out together. You get with your child and say, I'm not going to just push you aside and say, go find out for your mama. I'm going to be there for you. Now, some of you might say, well, but brother, you just don't understand the schedule that I've got. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't care about the schedule you've got. I care about the child that you've got. I care about the one that you're responsible to raise. I care about the one that's looking to you for answers. Moms, you're doing your part. For the most part, you know, we, we hope and pray you are at least. Most moms are right there to give advice even when you don't want it. Amen. Uh, yeah. Wives do the same thing. But moving from there, we're not, it's, not, it's not husband and wives day. It's father's day. But moving from there, we've got dumb daddies because we've got daddies who have chosen to remain silent. We've got daddies who have chosen that I don't want to be a part of the child raising thing. You just go ahead and do that and just let me know when I got to show up to events. My friend, you need to be involved in your child's life as well if you want your child to have the best life and to have the life that God has ordained for them to have. It's time for men to speak up. It's time for dads to speak up and to say, let me tell you, you they may be teaching you this in school but let me tell you that according to the Bible this is wrong and we need to stand up against it and let me show you what the Bible says don't just tell them if they come home and they say well well at school we learned that that it's okay if you uh, are a boy and you want to dress up like a girl or we've learned in school that it's okay if you uh, and you know that it's expected if before you get married if you end up uh, sleeping around with a whole bunch of people or whatever it is that they may hear in school whether it's coming from teachers or it's coming from friends don't just tell them you better not say that stuff anymore that's wrong the bible's against it now get out of my face open up your word and show them what the bible has to say so they can see it for themselves there's something about seeing something in print that's going to make a bigger imprint on somebody's life than if you just tell them what it says Whew. it's true you can be quiet but it's true i think one of the problems that we have is that the liberal cancel culture that we have going on today that has the doctrine of toxic masculinity. How many of you heard that phrase before? Toxic masculinity. And it's caused many men to shut their mouths concerning the raising of their children for fear of being called sexist or, sexist or toxic or just downright evil. It's okay, men, for you to tell your child that when God created you as a boy, or when God created you as a girl, that that's what you're supposed to be. Men, it's okay for you to tell your child that they need to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Not only so that they can avoid a devil's hell, but more importantly, so they can be a part of God's heaven. And they can have that eternal reward of being in His presence for all of eternity. Dads, it's okay for you to kneel down and pray with your child. It's expected for you to kneel down and pray for your child and with your child. Dad, it's okay for your child to see you come to the altar and humble yourself and get on your knees and pray to Almighty God and allow tears to flow, tears of joy or contrition or whatever it may be. It's okay for your child to see you crying as the Holy Spirit descends upon you and moves upon you. It's okay. Stop saying, well, my kid will never see me cry. I, my kids have seen me cry and they're probably tired of it to be honest with you I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift up my hands and I'm going to worship God why? because I want my boys to know that it's okay for them to do it too you see they may see mama doing it but they're boys 
They need to know that dad's going to do it too. They may hear mama praying for them, but they need to hear daddy praying for them too. We need to stop keeping our mouths shut. We need to stop being dumb with the things that we're, we're sh- we should be saying, but instead we're keeping it inside. We need to stop being mute about these things and understand, dads, that your job is not just to bring home the bacon. Your job is not just to make sure all the bills are paid. Your job is not just to make sure that nobody messes with your people or, or you're going to shoot them or beat them up or whatever it is. Your job is to help raise your children in the way that God has ordained for for them to be raised. Your job is to make sure that your household re, uh, worships God. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, that wasn't mama that was saying that. That was the dad that was saying that. That was the head of the house that was saying that. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My boys know that they don't have an option when it comes to church. Not just because I'm the pastor. But if you're living in my house, you're going to be in church. And if you ain't living right, we're going to sit closer and closer to the front and we got to sit on the altar and just say look preacher you just go ahead and preach we're going to start praying now because we need a head start whatever it's going to be those boys will not be able when they become adults will not be able to say nobody told me nobody showed me I didn't see what love was in my house I didn't see what it meant to be holy in my house I didn't see what it meant to be righteous in my house they will have no choice not only because they see it from their mother but because they see it from their father too Because I refuse to be mute when it comes to raising my children. I refuse to be silent. I refuse to say, well, mama's got this. They listen to her better anyway. I'm louder. They're going to hear me. I don't want to be just the one in my household where my wife does everything else until it gets out of her hands and then she says, just wait till I tell your father. I don't want them to just be afraid of me. I want them to be afraid of me. And they are. I don't want them to just be afraid of me. I want to make sure that they look to me and they say, that's the man I want to be. I don't want it to be to when they become adults that they're looking at me saying, Well, at least I know what not to do. You know who controls that? Me. By me showing them a godly example. You think that it's not godly? Uh, It's not in the Bible that we're supposed to be vocal in raising our children, that we're supposed to be vocal in making sure that our kids know right from wrong, that they know who God is, that they know what they're supposed to do? You think it's not scriptural? Well, how about this? There are over a dozen times in the book of Proverbs where the book of Proverbs admonishes a son to give heed, to hearken, to listen to the instruction of the father. Over a dozen times, the first five chapters of the book of Proverbs starts with a verse that is saying something along those lines. Now, let me say this very quickly. Moms, especially if you're a mom and you're by yourself and you don't have a father figure, I'm not saying, you know, good luck to you. You know, you're messed up and there's nothing you could do. I'm not saying that by any means. Thank you for stepping up and stepping into the gap and doing what you're supposed to do and making sure that that your kids or your grandkids or whoever it is that you're raising, that they hear the word of God and that they know the word of God. Thank you for doing that. But let me tell you this. If there's a man in the house, if there's somebody who uh, is, is the father or he's the uncle or he's the whatever he is if he's the man in the house he needs to make sure that he has a job to do too he needs to understand that it's up to him not to be dumb but to instead speak forth and and even if it's unpopular even if it's something that goes against what the norm uh uh, what the norm is becoming in this world even if it goes up against what some people may think and, and and they're standing up and saying that this is a way that the word of god says it that they're willing to stand up and say you may change your mind when you're an adult and there's nothing I can do about that but as long as you're in my household you're going to hear the truth and you're going to hear about how God wants you to live not only are you going to hear it but you're going to see it 
uh, manifested in me. You're going to see me living that as well. Man, I will tell you this. If you're one of these guys that says, don't do this, don't do that, because the Bible says so, but you do it yourself, you know what? Just be dumb. Be mute, please, because you're doing more damage than you are good, because you're telling the kid one thing, but you're not living it in your life. And let me tell you that as important as it is for you to speak these things, as important as it is for you to say these things, it's more important for them to see you living it yourself. Oh, you're hurting my feelings, Pastor. Well, you need to suck it up, Buttercup, because it's what you need to hear. When we've got dads that they're changing jobs every four or five months because they get upset or they're holding out for a management position or, well, they want me to come in every day. I don't know what that mess is all about. I'm, I'm going to live my life free and, and all this kind of thing. When we've got dads who will make any excuse that they can make so that they don't have to go to church. You know what? Your mama's going to take you to church. It'll be all right. I'm just going to stay home. I've worked hard this week. I'm going to get a rest. Well, what do you think you're teaching your child? You're teaching your child that there are more important things than to be in the presence of God. When you say, well, you know, I, I'd rather have my free time. And so, uh, you know, my wife works. And so we'll just live off of her stuff for a while. And I'm just going to kind of take it easy. And well, what, Don't be surprised then when your children grow up and they can't hold down a job. And they're having to live in poverty. And they're looking at the government to meet all their needs instead of looking at God to meet their needs. Because they can't hold down a job because they have no sense of responsibility. You're the one who's supposed to be putting that into them. Don't be surprised. If you live a life where you don't even know where your Bible is, or if you even still have one, if you live a life where you don't say anything about God or about Scripture until it's Sunday, or until you see a news, uh, a news article that makes you mad, they're taking down the Christian flag. We ought to be able to fly the Christian flag because we love Jesus. Hand me a beer. Don't be surprised if you do open your mouth, but it's all lip service. But you're not actually living what you're saying. Because that's going to show your children that they can't trust what comes out of your mouth. Oh, that's hard, Pastor. It's true. It's true. You can live your life according to the Word of God. But if you never say anything, you're not giving them instruction. You can say it all you want. You can say, don't commit adultery and don't steal and don't kill and love the Lord uh, our God with all your heart. You can say those things all you want, but if they look at you and you're not living it, you're not doing any good. What they're going to see is the hypocrisy. What they're going to hear is lip service. Why are our families in the conditions that they're in? Because dads haven't stepped up to the plate. Why are we seeing where there's just such a sweeping uh, sense of of sin and evil coming in uh, into this world and you know in ways that just seem like it's impossible and lord how much longer can you wait before you finally just take the church out because all i'm surrounded by is evil you want to know why because there are christian dads who have not stepped up and spoken They've decided to be dumb. They've decided to be mute. They've decided to say, well, I, I need them to find their own way. Let me tell you, I had somebody tell me about their child who was about 12 years old at the time, about their child. They had not come to church, and I said, where so and so? They said, well, they didn't want to come today. They're exploring their religious beliefs. And I said, what? They're trying to figure out how they're going to serve God or if they're going to serve God. So we're letting them make their decision. At 12 years old, my dad didn't let me make my decision at 12 years old. I, but the, only, the decision I had was you get in the car, you get a whipping, and then you get in the car. Anybody else have that kind of a day? Okay, just making sure I wasn't the only one. You know, they, maybe he was abusing me and I didn't know it. I don't know. But I didn't have a choice when it came to church. I was going to be in church whether I wanted to be there or not. Why? Because my dad wanted to show me and my mom wanted to show me that there was nothing more important than being in the presence of God. The whole idea of, well, we, you know, kids are people too. Kids are people. Kids are people that need to listen to their parents. 
Kids are people that we're in charge of, that we're responsible for, and that we've got to make sure that they're on the right path. And when they try to get off the path, that we kick them, I mean, we help nudge them right back onto the path where they're supposed to be. You know, it's like we're, we're like goalies or something, you know, and, and they try to come and get past us. We're like, no, 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 you, no, no, you need to get yourself right back on the right path. This whole mess of, well, we've got to let our kids discover themselves. I need to let my kids discover that I'm in charge. Do you know that? See, nodded their heads. Yes, didn't even, I mean, Jackson's eyes got like this, like, am I answering right? He knows. He's almost as big as me, but... He ain't there yet. Anyway, I'm kidding. I don't remember the last time that I, I whipped them in, in public. So anyway, <laughs> dads, it's really easy for us to say, well, but we work so hard and I get so tired when I go home and I'm just going to let mom take care of that because, you know, she's, she's the homemaker. Yes, she is. We, we don't just live in a house. We have a home because of what my wife does. And I'm very grateful for her. But what kind of man am I going to be if I say, all right, you know, babe, you, you do all this other stuff in the house and all that kind of thing, and I'm so grateful for that. You know what? They're yours. You go ahead and you, you raise them how you think you need to raise them. I'll be over here if you need me to paddle somebody. But you just go ahead and take care of them. It'll be fine. And uh, if, if there's any problems, just say, go ask your dad, and I'll just agree with whatever you say. Don't worry about it. But you, you, you just take care of that. How is that fair to her? We're a team. These boys are ours. And they're going to see both of their parents raising them and living according to the word of God. Because I'm not going to have them stand before me one day and say, why didn't you ever tell me the importance of living for Jesus Christ? Why didn't you ever show me that God should be number one in my life and everything else can just fall to the side? I'm not going to be responsible. If those boys ever here depart from me, I never knew you, that's not going to be on me. It's not going to be because I didn't do my part. They're going to know, and then they will have to make their own decision. And I'm, I'm trusting and I'm believing that they're going to make a decision for Jesus Christ. And that instead of hearing that, that they're going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And they're going to be able to come and they're going to be able to see me and they're going to throw their arms around me and say, thank you, Dad, for raising me in a way to where you made the right priorities, number one, to where you made Jesus Christ, number one. That's what I want to lead my boys. They're not going to have mansions and all this when I'm gone. If there's a reading of the will, it's going to see to be who, who gets to pick up my mail. And that's about it. You know, somebody might get my shoes. I don't know. But the legacy I want to leave them is a legacy that says, I had a father who raised me to show me that Jesus Christ is Lord. That he's more than just religion. That he's more than just going to church. That it's more than just somebody I know of from a book that was read once. But instead, he is a living, loving Savior who has given his life so that I could be free from the chains of sin. And now because of that, I can live my life for him and I can be with him in heaven forever. That's on me. Dads, we've had enough men that have kept quiet for too long. It's time to step up. Glenda, would you come to the keyboard, please? And if you would stand, church. I know some of what I said. You might say, well, you know, Pastor, I think you're being a little harsh or being a little old-timey or, or what have you, but I, I can't stress the importance enough. I can't stress the importance enough of having... Having a man in the godly man that is raising their child 
or their children to know who Jesus Christ is. And listen, it, it, maybe you've got girls. You know, and, you know, I mean, with, with guys, I don't know, men kind of gravitate a little bit more towards the guys because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a guy, they're a guy, and that sort of thing. But even with girls, men, don't you want your daughters to seek a godly man? To seek a man who's going to take care of his family? To seek a man who's going to, uh, is going to honor her and respect her? Don't you want it to be to where your daughters are going to be looking for a man who puts God first and everything else second? Don't you want a, your daughters to find a man who when they have kids, you're not going to have to worry about the kind of garbage that he's helping to teach them, but you know that he's going to open his mouth and he's going to raise his child to know who God is. Isn't that the kind of man you want for your daughter? You need to step up. We don't need dumb dads. We don't need mute dads. We don't need dads that are sideline dads. We don't need dads that are, I'll just be over here if you need me dads. We don't need dads that, that say, I know where the paddle is, everything else you got to figure out on your own. We don't need dads that say, well, I'm just going to go and work 20 out, 20 out of 24 hours a day and make sure that they've got plenty of money so that I ain't got to worry about all the rest of it. That's not what we need. We need dads that are going to stand up and say, let me show you what it means to be a godly man. Let me show you what it means to be a man who honors his wife, who protects his wife, who lifts up his wife and respects his wife and gives his life for his wife the way that Christ gave his life for the church. That's what we need in the house. We need men that are going to stand up and are going to say, son or daughter, I know that this is what you're seeing. I know this is what's popular, but you've got to understand what the word of God says. I'm not just going to tell you. I'm going to show you. Let's open up the word together and let's see what it says together and let's learn this together and pray together we need men that are not afraid to go and to take their son or their daughter's hand and say you look like you need some prayer let me pray with you let's kneel together and let's pray together and ask God to touch you and to meet your need we need men that are willing to say I'm going to go to the altar and I'm going to kneel before my Lord and my God and I will cry if I'm going to cry and I will raise my hands if that's what I feel the spirit doing and I want my children to see that so that they know how to worship so that they know how to humble themselves before Almighty God. That's what we need. And I ask each and every one of you to step up to the plate and say, that's what I'll be. If you will say that, if you'll say, look, I, I'm a dad or I've stepped in the position of a dad or I hope to be a dad someday or, or whatever it may be. If you say, but this is the kind of dad I want to be. I want to be a godly dad. I don't want to be a dumb dad. I don't want to be a mute dad. I don't want to be a dad that, that is on the sidelines. If you say that, I want to ask you if you would just come and stand in the altar area and just as a way of just saying, I'm, I'm making this proclamation in front of my kids that I'm going to live for God, that I'm going to be a godly man. I'm going to make this proclamation in front of my wife that I'm going to be a godly husband, that I'm going to lift her up in prayer not just my own needs but I'm gonna lift up her needs too would you just come forward and stand up here and then we're gonna pray as a body we're gonna pray as a body of believers together we're gonna pray that God will strengthen us we're gonna pray that God will inspire us we're gonna pray that God will give us what we need so that we can be the men of God that God has called us to be church are you grateful for these men that are up here today are you grateful for these men that are saying, I'm going to be what God has called me to be? I'm going to be the kind of dad, the kind of uncle, the kind of brother, the kind of husband, the kind of grandfather, whatever it may be. Are you grateful that there are some men that are stepping up to the plate saying, I'm going to be that man. I will not be silent, but I'm going to speak the word of God. All right, gentlemen, here's what I want you to do. We've got guys all throughout here, and I thank you so much for coming up. I just want you to put your hand on the shoulder of the guy next to you or on both the shoulders of the guys next to you. Because let me tell you, what we need is we need guys that are not in competition. We need guys that are not worried about, uh, well, but do I look better than that one or am I doing better than that one? We need guys that are willing to say, I'm going to lift up my brothers in Christ. I'm going to lift up the same guys that are, that are going through the same thing that I am. And we're going to pray. And church, I want you to stretch your hands this way as we pray. I want to pray blessings and favor and wisdom and courage and boldness upon the men of our church. 
I just want you to stretch your hands this way as we pray together. Almighty Father, you are our example. You are the example of what we are supposed to be as men. You are the example of what we're supposed to be as fathers. Of how we're supposed to love our wives and our children. Of how we're supposed to live our lives. You are the example, God. So I pray in the name of Jesus that every one of these men will become even more familiar with your word. That they will dive even more into your word to see what they are called to be as men of God. As fathers, as husbands, Lord, as, as uncles, as grandfathers, as brothers. Lord, that you will show them what they are called to be, Father. Lord, that they will have a boldness that will come upon them. And they will say, I will not be silent in the, in the raising of my children, but I will have a place. I will have a part. I will have something to say. I will direct them towards the Word of God and the life they should be living. God, I pray that you will give us a courage to stand up against whatever the, the world may be saying is the norm, whatever the world may be saying that we should be accepting. And if it's in contrast to what the Word of God says, God, that we'll have the courage to say so, that we'll have the courage to look unpopular, that we'll have the courage to uh, with our, our teenage boys and girls Lord that even if they may roll their eyes at us and say that we're out of touch Lord that we'll have the courage to stand firm and to say you can say I'm out of touch and I am out of touch with this world but I'm not out of touch with what the word of God has to say and thus saith the Lord he says these things he says this is the way we're to live God I pray that you will humble our spirits God Lord that we will not be afraid to kneel down and to pray uh, before our almighty maker. God, that we will not be afraid to let our children and our wives and our families and our church family see us raise our hands in, in gratitude and in and surrender to you, Father. Lord, that we will not be afraid to let the Holy Spirit come upon us and move in a way that may not seem sophisticated, that may not seem like it's in, in uh, 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 elegance or, or that it, it may be out of order or seem out of order, but God, we know that it's completely in your order because it's your Holy Spirit. God, let us not be afraid of that, but instead let us stand up and let us show our kids, let us show our families what it means to worship, what it means to be a prayer warrior, what it means to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Open our mouths, God, that we may speak forth the things that the Word of God has to say, that we may speak forth the things to our family, that we may give the instruction to our family as your Word sees fit. God, not that we try to lord over them, not that we try to put them in their place, not that they try to be servants to us, God, but Lord, that we are servants to them, and but we are lifting up the name of Jesus in all that we do, in all that we pray, in all that we are, are encountering, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help us to strengthen each other. Help us to let iron sharpen iron. God, help us to be there for our brothers when they're in a time of need and to help them stand firm upon your word in the wonderful name of Jesus in the wonderful name of Jesus and in the example of our heavenly father we pray amen amen hallelujah hallelujah gentlemen I love each and every one of you and I thank God for you I thank God for the fact that you had the boldness and courage to come up here today and I pray that you didn't just come up to make your wife happy although it probably did Unless she was like, mm-hmm, we'll see how long this lasts. Women, support them. I thank you for coming up. Because if it's not, if we don't have men that are willing to be courageous, if we don't have men that are willing to be bold, if we don't have men that are willing to be holy and are willing to be righteous, our kids don't have a prayer. And that's what it comes down to. You might say, oh, that's a big burden to put on my shoulders. Yep. And God's the one that put it there. Be the man that God has called you to be. So you can show your children how they're to walk. Proverbs 22, 6. Train. Train up a child and the way he should go. It doesn't just mean beat it into him. All the 
best ways that people learn. All the, you know, some people learn well by lectures. Some people learn more well by hands-on and all that sort of thing. But seeing it is the best way to teach a child. And if they see it in you, they're going to live it in them. I thank God for you. And I pray God's blessings and favor upon each one of you. And I just pray that you will make a commitment to get even more into the Word so you can draw ever closer to God so that you can bring your family with you. In Jesus' name. You can go back to your seats. Thank you, gentlemen. Do you love these guys, church? Do you love these men that the Lord has given us? Praise the Lord. Just remain standing as we dismiss today. Be who God has called you to be, gentlemen. You're not dumb, as in stupid. You may not be a genius, but you've gotten this far. Amen. But God has entrusted you with something great. God has entrusted you with something blessed. You need to make sure you're doing your part. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for being here today. Happy Father's Day again to you. If, gentlemen, if you did not get one of the, we still have some, I'm assuming. Okay. If you did not get one of these uh, back scratchers, make sure that you get one before you leave. Let's go ahead and pray and then... Uh, will be dismissed today. Those who are going to youth camp today, I need you to be at the, ch- uh, the parsonage of the church, uh, my driveway. I need you to be there by 315 so we can make sure everybody gets packed up and make sure we get a picture because my wife's going to want a picture. But make sure we get a picture and uh, all that kind of thing. But be here by 315 if you would. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we dismiss this morning. Father, we praise you and thank you for this wonderful Father's Day that we have. Thank you, God, for all the blessings that you have given us. Thank you for the fathers you have blessed us with. And maybe not everybody has a great father. Maybe not everybody has a father that's shown them how to be a man of God or a woman of God. Maybe not everybody has a father who has sown properly into them. Lord, I pray that wherever they have missed, God, that you will step in and that you will sow into us instead. And you will show us, Lord. And then we will show others. We will show those that you have put in our charge, God, of how they should live and how they should be. Lord, I pray for blessings and favor upon every household that is in this place that's watching on TV uh, or watching on the internet. Lord, I pray that you will just bring blessings to them. And God, I pray that we will be ready to come to your house again when these doors are open, ready to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget, Wednesday is our last Wednesday for the summer uh, until VBS. It'll be at 7 o'clock. Be here Wednesday. God bless you.